Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnus, me to Katie Douglas about The Walk, which is going to be in theaters June 10th. Thank you for doing this. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for talking to me. No, absolutely. Um, there's a lot at play here. This is a, this is very tough subject matter. It's very intense film. What's your mm-hmm. mindset signing on to a project like this? Um, well, initially when um, Daniel reached out to me with the script, um, I had known about busing in Boston before, but I, I weirdly didn't know the extent to what happened in specifically Southie. Yep. Um, so I, w- I was really, um, he, he sent along this documentary um, about uh, busing that took place in like, it, I think the documentary picked up on the situation in like 1976. Um, and I learned all about it and it, it just became more and more of a, like a very interesting um, situation. And I just wanted to talk about it a lot. So going into it, I, I think I was just, um, you know, just, pretty eager to shed light on like this very very weird um thing that happened in south boston absolutely is it a completely different mindset as an actor to hop on a project that is like based on true events and that there's kind of certain things and expectations with the project and the story compared to something that is not based on true events or is it all kind of storytelling and you kind of go with the flow depending on the project yeah, I think so. I mean, that's an interesting question because it, you, you kind of want it all to be um, delivered with the same level of truth. But but for me, yeah, it's it's a little different when it's a when it's a um, true to life story, especially one like this. Yeah, um, you just want to do it right and mm-hmm. do it um, truthfully and just just tell it how it is. That's kind of your role in all of this is just just tell the story. Absolutely. You know, the trailer got released. People are going to be able to see it in theaters pretty soon. I mean, it gets intense. And I'm sure, you know, for a lot of actors like yourself on this, you know, there were some scenes that were at times maybe difficult to to film and, and kind of portray and everything. Was it an overwhelming process emotionally, like play, like being in this film at times, Katie? Of course. Yeah. yeah. I thought about it like v- way too much, I think. And then I, I caught myself um, and, and kind of realized that like, um, you're you're just telling the story like this is what happened, and the the best thing that you can do is is tell it with empathy. You know, at the end of the day, it's all just about um, empathy and and just and just do it justice. Just shed shed light on on what the outstanding point here is, and and to me that was um, just kind of um, zeroing in on uh, on the ways that um, ignorance kind of. Uh, the violence that is born out of ignorance. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things about storytelling these days is, you know, stories that weren't necessarily told before are finally getting told because of the access. Is it safe to say that's something that you love the most right now about storytelling that a lot of stories like the walk that people might not be aware of are finally being able to get out there. And we have access to those stories. Yeah. I mean, when you're um, in the absence of honest storytelling, I guess what are we just, or just abandoned to loneliness and confusion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, you have to kind of, you and the cast and crew out there like dive back into the, you know, the seventies for this project. I mean, so aesthetic is something that kind of comes to mind whenever you go kind of back in time, you're doing a piece in a different era and everything. What was that like kind of working on a film that took place in the 1970s specifically? Yeah. I love doing stuff like that because it is, it's, it is like a, a, a deep dive it's character study like i looked up a lot of um like videos of teenagers in the 70s especially boston kids mm-hmm. um you just kind of like wh- where their like mentality like politically what the political environment is it's so much fun personally i think it you know it's interesting i guess depending do you have like in terms of preparation is it different depending on the project because you know you look at this project you look at Ginny and Georgia, those are completely different projects. Those are two completely different characters as well. So there's two things at play. The projects are different. The characters are different. Um, Is it different kind of preparations and mindsets or is it all like kind of storytelling and doing it, so to speak? Mm, yeah, 
Yeah, I think so. I think that like the certain characters demand a different type of preparation. Like if I'm just playing a teenage girl, I know all about what that's like. And obviously not <laughs> this particular um, like character, but if it's, uh, there, there, there's, there might be a certain level of ease um, that differentiates yeah. one character from another. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's, uh, and kind of to add to that a little bit too, you know, this is going to the theaters and everything. When they get a chance to watch this film, there's a lot of things I'm sure you want to take away of this. I mean, I feel like awareness and, you know, because again, there might not be, there might be people that aren't familiar as much with what kind of happened in Boston and everything, but what are some takeaways that you're hoping they get of it when they watch the walk specifically? Uh, reflection, you know, yeah. it's an opportunity to reflect. I think I would, I would really, um, I advise people to go uh like learn about what actually happened because it's incredibly inter- I could talk about it for forever um um but I, I think I think at the end of this kind of like what I was really focused on was was uh shedding light on um like the crime that is uh abandoning critical thinking and just following the crowd and just being a, a product of your environment um and also just just like the victims of of what happened in Southie. Yeah. Um, it, it's crazy because like uh, it, it, the the concept of of busing for the sake of integrational purposes is is a big conversation that um, a lot of people have different opinions about, uh, like how um how how the how plan how good the plan was and mm-hmm. and um, essentially um, it's just. Uh, 80 schools opened up in Boston and started um, busing that summer and only Southie reacted in a way like that. And it's really interesting to try to understand why. Absolutely. It's do, does it ever come to mind that, you know, you're making an important, like, is, is it the fact that like, this is an important film. So is that kind of the first thing that kind of comes to mind? Like you go to work, you're like, I'm working on a film, but I'm working on an important film. Like, is that something that, like, is always up to, like, that comes to mind when you were, when you were working on it? Uh, I can recognize when there's, when there's weight to something. Yeah. yeah uh, I can obviously try to put weight on everything, but for this one in particular, I was, uh, I thought about a lot. Yeah. A lot. Absolutely. Um, no, absolutely. And, you know, the, it's crazy how many, you know, there's a lot of access to a lot of different stories these days, um, you know, because of streaming platforms and people are going to be able to see it. It's going to be in theaters and eventually people are probably, are probably going to be able to see it like on demand and everything. You kind of experience this access aspect of things with Ginny and George on Netflix where a lot of people get to see things. What do you think about that specifically, Katie? What do you think about that landscape now of like the, the streaming digital kind of space that kind of allows all your projects to be seen like all around the world? Like, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's what you sign up for. And I guess um, it, it, I think the most stressful part is like while you're filming and knowing that like they could use this take that I hated and everyone's going to see it. And that's stressful. But, you know, once it's done and out there, like <laughs> it's yeah. kind of it's part of it. Like, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I've come to terms with like with all of that. It's nothing to dwell over at the end of the day. Did you sometimes think that Ginny and Georgia was like a genre bending show a little bit that, you know, you kind of, you had moments where it was funny had moments where it wasn't funny at all. There were some kind of emotional moments. Like there was a lot of things kind of happening in that show. Yeah. It's interesting like that. I've heard people say that a lot. It was kind of like this really refreshing. I've heard people compare it to like, um, not like a John Hughes vibe, but like something similar to that. It, it was very idiosyncratic in its own way. Yeah, uh, and a, yeah, lot, a lot, a lot of characters um, took off. A lot of, a lot of char- a lot of people were curious about a lot of the different characters. Did you kind of notice that? Because it's a, it's an ensemble cast, and there are obviously some characters that are the mains, like the lead series regulars. But then there's a lot of supporting cast. I mean, a lot of like there was there, like the amount of like love from all around the world but all the characters in that show the ones that were the protagonists and the antagonists it was pretty crazy to see pretty crazy yeah i mean that's what the show does best i guess it was it was delightful to see um people love it yep you know we just we never could have expected that much 
I know, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, what were some learning experiences for you working on the walk? Obviously, you brought it up. I mean, you brought up a lot of it, kind of like you learned about like what happened and everything in terms of the study perspective. But like as an actor, as a storyteller, what were some learning experiences for yourself on this movie? Sure. Well, uh, obviously worked with some phenomenal actors who I've like watched my whole life, which mm-hmm. was uh, you know, I, every actor was, it's like, a yeah, it's going to be a learning experience on its own. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think very much so. But also, um, it, it was an indie film, which yeah. is where my heart lies. And a lot of the time you're finding yourself, like you have m- much more than one job. Like you might be, um, like doing your own hair or doing your own or standing in or, or, you know, like being your own props person. But, um, I, I, I just find more and more, I learn how much, I love filmmaking and the hands-on aspect, and maybe maybe more so behind the camera stuff. Yeah. Um, like we, it was it was, and I'm sure you've heard this from other actors, but very stressful shoot, and everyone just handled it like a goddamn professional. Yeah. Um, you know, we got it done. We had just a like a bunch of creative minds working uh, together, and it was absolutely. I think we just learned a lot about our passion for the project. Oh, absolutely. No, for sure. And yeah, no, that that's true. It's funny you mentioned about indie films because I always think about this. Do you find like the term indie, like independent, do it yourself, kind of like small yeah. scale, right? I find that weird because it's like, even if you look at it, music, it's like some of the biggest movies on the planet are like independent films. Right? <laughs> and, like, I think in, that's in, the best way to do it. <laughs> When you are like the creator, you it's 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 coming down to your word, not like not like some yeah. big studio. Or... But a lot of like, um, but even yeah. in music, like in Ginny and Georgia, there's a lot of like indie bands, indie rock bands on the soundtrack, yeah. and it's a great soundtrack. But the thing is, it's like indie rock or indie indie music, you know independent you know bands like vampire week and arctic monkeys came and pal these are indie rock bands these bands mm-hmm. are playing stadiums <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, it's yeah. kind of ironic a little bit <laughs> don't get me wrong indie does not mean unsuccessful no i'm it's not saying that I'm saying, yeah like, in, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> well, clearly it does not mean unsuccessful you're right no Crazy I'm saying, though, right i know what you mean i know yeah. what you mean it's it's a crazy world. Um, Kate, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn. It was really great chatting with you. Oh, thanks for talking to me, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely. The Walk, available in theaters June 10th. They can check that out. They can keep up to date with um, you on social media, right? Like Instagram is probably the best bet. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Not Absolutely. Bad, Very okay. cool. For sure. This has been Pop Turner, youtube.com slash Pop Turner previous episodes. Look out for Kate Douglas in The Walk, June 10th in theaters. Till next time, it's Katie and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.